pollsters and pundits are always trying to predict how voters are going to vote. Well, it turns out they might want to talk to residents of a city in Macomb County that's earning quite a track record when it comes to choosing the winning candidates. Paula Tutman tries to find out why one city almost always seems to get it right. If you want to know what's really on the minds of the Michigan American electorate, the city of Sterling Heights is a place you can start asking questions. I think uh, a lot of people here are pretty reasonable, probably a good representation of uh, America. It just so happens that this is the right longitude and latitude for attitudes that choose our national and state leaders. Since the year 2000, in terms of picking the president of the United States, Sterling Heights has only gotten it wrong once. It's only gotten the governor wrong once. It's only gotten the attorney general's office wrong once. The way Sterling Heights votes, basically, so goes Michigan and so goes the nation, close to 90% of the time. I think our voters vote for the people, not necessarily for the party. So while they might uh, lean toward one party or the other, um, I think our voters really do take a look at the individual that's running for office and they vote their conscience. In 2002, Sterling Heights incorrectly chose Republican Dick Postumus for governor, but correctly voted Democrat Jennifer Granholm the next election cycle. It correctly voted for George W. Bush and Barack Obama twice, chose Donald Trump correctly in 2016, but incorrectly Donald Trump in 2020. In 22 years, it has never gotten Secretary of State wrong. And for the 2020 midterms, it correctly chose the Democratic winners of governor, secretary of state, attorney general, county exec, all three state proposals, and in terms of down ballot votes, correctly predicted a mix of Republican and Democratic congressional and state legislative offices, with the exception of two. So when you do the math, if you want to know the pulse of the people, Sterling Heights pretty much has it. Now this election for me was abortion rights was a big one. You should not be taking away rights from people who've had them for 50 years. Um, it's just a sign of regression. Election deniers was a big one, uh, you know, preserving democracy, that kind of thing. Like, I want to vote for people that actually oh. care about our community. The economy mattered, but I don't know how much, you know, my vote really influences that. I think there are a great cross-section of uh, the, the country and of our state. Um, we have, we're very, what I like to call a purple community. Uh, we're about 50% Republican, 50% Democrat. And, you know, they, their voters just come out and they vote. Yeah, and so I'm taking a look at some of these other down ballot races, right down to judges and even uh, trustees for universities and colleges. Karen, they get them right. And so if, if you want to know what's on the minds of Michiganders or even America in general, then this little town, Sterling Heights, about 134,000 people, 102,000 are registered voters. They vote. They are a microcosm of what the war of what our nation, I should say, are thinking, both Democrats and Republicans. What an interesting story. I love it. Sterling Heights out of all the places, right, Paula? <laughs> right here in Stone Heights. That's right. All right. We appreciate it. Thank you.